What a great day it is to celebrate today. Thank you so much for being here. I'm Cedric Campbell, and I'm honored to be the chairman of the Montgomery Area Chamber of Commerce. It's only fitting that we're standing in the lab on Dexter today, our area's hub for entrepreneurs and small business leaders. A place where dreams are made one step at a time and with community support. I'd like to make a special thank you to the chamber staff for hosting us today and making this day possible, along with the governor, our state legislators, county, and city elected officials. Thank you all for your hard work, your long hours, attention to detail, and all efforts in making today possible. We are honored this morning to welcome a new business in our community, a business that has impressed our city, county, and state leaders. Before I introduce our guest of honor, let me tell you a little bit about this business leader. He's humble, he knows how to dribble a basketball, <laughs> how to flip hamburgers, how to run a fast food restaurant, and most importantly, how to make, make big plays. Ulysses Lee Bridgman, better known as Junior, is a former basketball star who not only won the Indiana State Championship, but also helped the University of Louisville to the big dance in the Final Four. And then, as a first round draft choice, spent 12 years in the NBA, playing most, most of those with the Milwaukee Bucks. But he wasn't finished there, because during his downtime from basketball, he was working and learning the fast food franchise world. After his NBA retirement, he went on to own hundreds of different fast food franchises, but he wasn't done there. With all his knowledge about food and beverage business, he became a baller for Coca-Cola Company. And in 2020, while everyone was experiencing the pandemic, Junior decided to expand his business by starting Bridgman Sports and Media Team and purchasing Ebony and Jet Magazine. So it is fitting that we are here today in the lab on Dexter, welcoming a leader with a winning record from MVP to CEO. We are so excited to introduce Ulysses Junior Bridgman, founding partner of Mana Capital Partners, so he can tell us about his next big play. Junior, the stage is yours. Good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you, Cedric, and thank you to the great state of Alabama and the city of Montgomery. and definitely to the city of Montgomery for welcoming our team here to this beautiful, and it is a beautiful and historic, and it is an historic, beautiful, historic city. And before I get started, I just want to introduce you to, to part of my team that, that's here with me today. Uh, if they would stand, uh, Rick Frazier, uh, Quentin Martin, somewhere, oh, there he is, and Travis, Travis Serich right here. And together they have, I don't know how many years in the food and beverage built, uh, business, uh, probably 200 years. <laughs> but more importantly, the facility we're going to show you, they, they have been involved with building these type of facilities all around the world. So we're, we're excited to, to be here. And just like the entre entrepreneurs that come into this, bu this building to uh, work on their dreams, we dream big also. And uh, today, well, everybody knows that Alabama is known for being a wonderful place to do business, and we are proud to be announcing that our newest affiliate for MANA Capital Partners, MANA Beverages, 
and Ventures will build our first facility in Montgomery. And our goal is to be the leading total beverage supply chain company in North America while operating with the highest quality and sustainable capabilities needed to produce beverages for world-class brand owners. Think about world-class brands. How many are world-class brands out there? So we got a lot of producing to do. <laughs> And Man of Beverages and Ventures will fill the gap for the major brands who want to be asset light, nimble, and make a difference in their communities by hiring minority and women-owned businesses. Our new facility will be located on, off of Interstate 65 and Hope Hall, the Hope Hall exit in Montgomery and it will encompass 180 acres with a 1,700,000, well, let me start over, with a 1.7 million square foot facility. <laughs> and we'll start with 250 jobs and probably get up to 280 jobs as we continue to expand and, and bring new things that we can do in that facility. And if everything goes well, and why would it not go well, <laughs> we ex expect our first bottles, cans, to be coming off the lines in early, hopefully early 2025. It takes a long time to build one of these facilities and to get all the equipment in from overseas and blah, blah, blah. But you guys all knew that anyway. So, so let, let me say how truly special it is to be here with you and special, special for me to be making this announcement here in Montgomery, a place that has just a tremendous history. And I must say, and it's not on the script, that when we looked at various cities and people tried to lure us into various cities, what made it and made it for Montgomery was really the people that we met. They were genuine about their love for the city. They were genuine about what they wanted to do to help us. And we did not see that other places around the country. So when people ask, well, why'd you go to Montgomery? Was it the rail? Was it the ability to get to other cities easy? Was it the opportunity to get to the Southwest? No. The truth is, the people here in Montgomery are genuine. And that's what, what made us come here. Now, Governor Ivey, if I could ask you to join me on stage and would love to have you help me with this countdown. <laughs> All right, I got to get it right. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Thank you, Governor Ivey, for all your support and all your help from the state in, in making this a reality, a reality of possibility. And just thank you again. And we really appreciate it. Thank you. Well, hello, everyone. What an exciting day, both for the city of Montgomery and the great state of Alabama. Here is an important message. If you're willing to work hard, we want to support you all the way. And that absolutely includes helping to provide good quality jobs, just like the ones that are being created here today. To accomplish this, we have to constantly strive to make Alabama's business climate so attractive as for the big time employers. And I don't know about y'all, but I'd say announcements like this is a solid sign that the state of Alabama, we're doing things right. <laughs> Manor Beverages and Ventures is exactly the kind of company that we're working hard to bring to Alabama every day. This company has strong leadership 
a proven record of success and an exciting vision for the future. Today's announcement represents $600 million investment and more than 280 new jobs in the River region, but this is only the beginning of a partnership between MANA and the state of Alabama. Announcements like this don't happen very often. Well, they don't ever happen without a lot of work and teamwork, and during my time as governor, I've been fortunate to have an all-star team to include Chambers of Commerce, like we have here in Montgomery, Alabama, and our Department of Commerce, and so many others in the public and private sectors. Without each of you, none of this could be possible. Folks, in the last five years alone, we've created some 65,000 new jobs and attracted over 32 billion, with a B, dollars in investments. And my goal for the next four years is to lean heavier on our public and private partnerships and attract more jobs and companies like this one. We all know there's great potential here in Alabama, but it's going to take all of us to fully reach it. So thank you all for being here today and for making today possible. And Junior, my Junior go, hey Junior, <laughs> and Junior, thank you so much for choosing to do business in Alabama. You will not regret it. May God continue to bless each of you and the great state of Alabama. Good morning. I want to first start by thanking uh, Governor Ivey for her leadership. Uh, and for being such a, a strong supporter for economic development, not just for the city of Montgomery and central Alabama, but for our entire state. I think it's a testament to her as well as her entire team, uh, the amount of wins that the state has racked up in this last year. And certainly, we're on board to do our part uh, here in the city of Montgomery. Uh, we're seeing record uh, announcements with a few more to go. And so I think right now, um, we are certainly having a successful year. And a lot of that comes from the teamwork that's involved uh, from the governor, uh, our state legislative delegation, uh, some of whom that are here, as well as our city and county leaders. And so I certainly want to recognize members of our local delegation uh, that are here. I think I saw State Senator Kirk Hatcher uh, here. Thank you, Senator Hatcher, for, for your work. Um, I know I saw our uh, local delegation chair, Kelvin Lawrence, uh, here as well. Thank you. Uh, and any other members of our legislative delegation uh, that are here for your involvement and your cooperation to help us bring these uh, type of projects to this area. Also want to recognize members of our city council. Uh, Ed Grimes is here. Uh, thank you uh, for being here. Audrey Graham uh, is here as well. I don't know if there are any other members of the city council uh, that are here, but certainly our president, Charlie Jenright, and Pro Tem, uh, C.C. Calhoun, uh, we appreciate them and all of our council members for working with us uh, on initiatives like this. You know, Manic Capital Partners launching its new uh, beverage venture, building a 600 million state-of-the-art manufacturing facility uh, is not something that uh, we should just walk past and just kind of think happens on its own. Uh, this venture will be one of the world's largest beverage manufacturers, and the facility will produce more than $60 million worth in cases of beverage each year. That will create almost 300 new jobs. We're proud of the partnership we've cultivated, and we're committed to continue to build on this together. This is another great performance, again, by the city, the county, our Chamber of Commerce, and the state to bring this type of partnership to this region. And MANA Capital Partners and MANA Beverages and Ventures is the kind of entity we want in our city. It's a minority-owned organization that chooses to be an asset to world-class brand owners while also investing in sustainability and impact-oriented opportunities for black and women-owned businesses. That's significant. That goes beyond just the bottom line. That goes to the true 
testament of who the ownership and the leadership team and what they represent at this company. They want to make money like anybody does. We want them to make a lot of money. That means more taxes for us. <laughs> but any great business venture such as this that prioritizes black and brown communities and having a social compact beyond just what is done financially is significant. Helping to increase capital and capacity in communities while doing so is something that we can't ignore. They've already asked about opportunities to partner with our schools, uh, our two-year colleges, incubators, and what type of things are we doing to help grow the supply chain and to grow this network and this ecosystem right here in Montgomery, in central Alabama. Not just what were we doing in incentives, not just what we were doing in terms of abatements, but how they could make a difference beyond just their financial report that they have to share with their shareholders and others. And I think that's a testament to the team, especially Ulysses Lee, Jr. Bridgman, a managing partner for Mana Capital Partners. You've heard some about his athletic uh, success, having a story career with the Milwaukee Bucks, uh, where he was the original Giannis. Um, <laughs> you take that. Retired jersey and all. But it's really how he has played the game of life after his NBA career that has defined him. Uh, for those that have done their research or may know his name, you know he was successful uh, in the food service industry. He had hundreds of stores. Uh, I was unsuccessful. I had one <laughs> and could not manage that. So he has shown to manage one of the toughest areas of business, and that being the restaurant and hospitality area, before moving on to distribution. That's significant for any business person, but certainly someone who is transitioning from one area to the next. That has made him one of the 10 wealthiest retired athletes in the world. He's number four in 2016. We're going to try to help him get to number one. <laughs> he even recently bought Ebony and Jet magazines. And that's significant to many of us uh, in the African-American community and really in this entire country. A entity of what was Johnson Publications, that was our Life magazine. That was our Time magazine. Uh, and it still is. It holds a fabric to many of the things that happen right here in Montgomery when other mainstream news outlets would not catalog and would not capture it. We leaned on Ebony and Jet. So we're appreciative for not only in buying it, but investing in something that has been a foundation for America for so many years, and then trusting a new generation of Bridgman's to take on that task of leading this into this digital world. So when we look at the big picture, it's important for us to step back and see how we strategically position Montgomery as a hub for advanced supply and logistics enterprises. When we're talking about things from the inland port, when we're talking about the airport itself, and we're talking about rail, and we're talking about infrastructure, it's important for us to understand why that matters. That helps us bring projects like this to this region. And while I would love to say that everything is going to just benefit Montgomery, it's not. It's going to benefit all of central Alabama. This is a regional game changer for all of us. And so I think we have to appreciate all that has gone into this from everybody who's been a part of it. Because each is a piece that fits into a bigger plan to ensure that Montgomery thrives in this new economy of jobs and careers of the 21st century. And we anticipate sharing more good news with Governor Ivey very soon. And we look forward, most importantly, to really celebrating this moment and this day and capturing this new partnership with Mana Beverages and Ventures. And I want to say to the entire Mana team, uh, you have my cell number. Uh, you can't send me jokes. Uh, you can't make fun of my Dallas Cowboys. Um, tread lightly when it comes to the Crimson Tide. We're still a little sore right now. And uh, even at Morehouse and Vanderbilt, we understand that we aren't always there to win the football games. We're there to win the game of life. So text me, call me any day, any time, and we'll make sure we do whatever we need to do, even after the ribbon's cut, to make sure you're successful and profitable. And this is a working relationship that we hope that turns into a partnership and one that continues on for a number of years. So thank you so much. Welcome to Montgomery, and we look forward to working with you. Take care.
Well, Cedric said Junior had four attributes. Dribble basketball. I, I used to be able to do that a little bit. Make big plays. I don't have many of those. The third one was flip burgers. I, I'm a grill master. The fourth one was humble. I'm definitely not the humble part, so that, that's not there. I want to introduce my team with the Montgomery County Commission, Vice Chairman Isaiah Sankey, uh, Commissioner Dan Harris, Commissioner Rhonda Walker, and Commissioner Ziegler Moore, Miss uh, Carmen Ziegler Moore. Carmen Moore Ziegler. I got it backwards, Carmen. Carmen Moore Ziegler. You know, I've been on the County Commission for six years. Uh, probably the best two days or nights of my time on the County Commission was the Friday night when Ellen was on the phone and she had my great friend from a Coca-Cola days, Quentin Martin on the other end, and he said, Doug, you ain't got rid of me yet. Just because you retired from Coke, you ain't got rid of me yet. That was a great night to know that manna was coming. And then today, to be here and be able to celebrate this great, great day for Montgomery County. The time I met with them before, the one thing I took away from that, because when you're out recruiting industries and they're the prospect, most time the prospect wants to know what you're going to do for me. All they wanted to talk about that day was what they're going to do for Montgomery and what they can do. And, and they meant it. It wasn't just lip service. They meant it. So again, thank y'all so much for being here. We told you that day that if you come, we're going to continue to recruit you through ribbon cuttings and 10-year anniversaries and 20-year anniversaries. I probably won't be here much longer than that, so I ain't going to commit past that one. <laughs> but uh, those things. But I, I'd be remiss if I didn't say a shout out to Ellen McNair and Shelby Stringfellow. I mean, that, we need to give them a hand. Wonderful job, and thank y'all so much for being here. Looking forward to working with you continuously. Thank y'all. It's been mentioned several times this morning that things like this don't just happen. The, uh, the work that was done to bring MANA to Montgomery was collaboration from the state, the city, the county leaders, but I don't want to forget our other partners. Our utility partners, our friends at CSX were there with us the whole way, and I just want to make sure we recognize them and thank them as well. <laughs> Junior and the MANA team, we look forward to the relationship, the partnership, and you know, so grateful that you're coming and, and your plans on increasing wealth and prosperity to those in minority and, and women-owned businesses. That's uh, appreciated and, and not under uh, appreciated. So thank you all so much for coming. Have a great day, and we look forward to more of these in the future. Yeah.